Good morning. Today I am in Seoul in Incheon Airport and I'm quite excited today as I'm going to be flying number one to Japan and number two on an airline I've never flown on before. It's Air Seoul. It's a low-cost carrier from Asiana and I believe Asiana is just about to be uh, bought by Korean Air so that's a bit of an interesting development. I'm not sure if this airline is going to continue in the future but we'll take a look. It's almost 7 a.m. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, it's almost 7 a.m. and that's when the lounge opens. I didn't really manage to get much sleep last night, only a couple of hours, as I had to leave leave my hotel at 5 a.m. to get here for 7. It takes one hour, 20 minutes on the train, plus the time it takes for me to get to Salt Station. It's at the check-in counter. Um, it's kind of annoying because there's no online check-in and the screens uh, behind me, there's some self-check-in there. They don't work either. The only thing I can think of is maybe uh, because Japan still has stringent border, re border requirements maybe. Um, I think you need to do some stuff on an app so to save having to check people at the, at the gate. And they probably didn't say everybody has to check in, check in here. And another funny thing I found here is it says There's a sign telling you to put your kimchi in your checked luggage as you can't take it, take it through security. All right, I managed to get checked in. I now understand why they were having people check in at the desk because they're really, really anal about everyone's documents being proper, uh, the COVID certificates, etc., etc. So the problem with my, me, me was my COVID certificate, uh, vaccine certificate had um, Cominati instead of Pfizer written on it. And she was like, oh, I'm not sure about that. And then she had to check with the supervisor and then I've got a British passport. So she wasn't sure if I needed a visa or not. So it added a bit of time. But anyway, it was all done in 20 minutes. And now I want to go to security and I'll catch up with you guys when I get to the other side. It's pretty cool. I've never seen that before. They have the security gates and how long you're going to be waiting on each gate. With my lounge key credit card, I had choice of two lounges. Unfortunately, one of them was completely full and was turning people away. The other one, this one, was allowing people in, but by the time I left, they were also turning people away. As Korea had strict border entry requirements up until very recently, I assume Incheon Airport isn't quite up into the full swing of things yet. Boarding was done via a set of remote gates away from the main terminal. These were accessed using a train, and from what I could see, they were really predominantly used by low-cost carriers. It actually says on the back of the plane, you can see it just there. Uh, it says Kumo Asiana Group. Boarding was done efficiently and on time, and you can really tell the age of the aircraft by looking at the in-flight entertainment systems. They look dated. Seat comfort was adequate for this two-hour flight, and there was plenty of legroom available. These aircraft are actually inherited from the parent group, Asiana. The flight was completely full. As the borders had just reopened, this is pretty much expected. A fair few of the passengers were actually off tour groups. Whilst boarding was on time, unfortunately our departure was delayed. This is due to a delay by the baggage handlers. Fortunately the delay was just short, 5 or 10 minutes at the most. Immediately after takeoff, I fell right asleep and woke up just as we were landing at Narita Airport. Well, I've made it to a very empty looking Narita Airport. The flight was absolutely perfect, left on time. It arrived just about on time. I think it's three or four minutes late. Uh, the, plane, the service on the plane was pretty much non-existent. It was a low cost carrier. So I don't think meals were included on the flight. To be honest, I fell asleep as soon as I got on the plane as uh, I didn't sleep at all last night. And I woke up and I was in, I was in Tokyo. So from that perspective, it was a very good flight. I had a good sleep. These people are checking. Thank you. 
I'd say. We seem to have some pretty stringent border measures up to today. I had to do this weird form thing on my phone and then I don't know what's going to happen. But they were very strict about giving out boarding passes at the in Seoul and they seem to have a lot of procedures here. So many people. There's all of this. I just want to go on fine. Seems like there's more staff than customers. They're people that don't have um, don't have the forms filled in. They've all got their smartphones out. Luckily, I'm semi-organised, so I did all of that ahead of time. You have to do something. You have to install an app on your phone, submit some papers on there, submit your um, vaccine certificate and some other stuff, picture of your passport, and they verify your data against your vaccine certificate. And if it's okay. On the app it comes up as blue, I think it is, which approves it for, um, approves it as legit or whatever, I don't know. And then you don't need to sit there and get it done while you're sat there. But they did all this check-in as well at the, in Seoul, they checked, they were so stringent about my vaccine certificate. Okay. Oh my god, what is this now? It's a bit bureaucratic, like for all these papers and oh, it's giving me giving me some instructions. Wear mask, sanitize. All right, it was a little bit of a palaver, a bit of a queue at immigration, but I managed to get there in the end, and I am officially in Japan finally. So now I'm going to head to my hostel, which is in the city. Please go to the handrail and watch your step. Well, it's quite busy here. I need to go to Akiba, so I think I'll go on the Skyliner uh, and then 
to change at some point. This is three minutes from track five. I don't want to miss it though, it's just there. Oh, thank God. Two by auto station. Here you go, Skyliner. Train two are so nice, aren't they? Very clean, very organised. Now, one thing I really loved about uh, what just happened today is that you don't need to get one of those transport cards. You can just go on Apple on your phone and just add one, like it's a feature and you can top it up with your credit card on your on your phone using Apple Pay which is amazing best idea ever it would be better if they just use credit cards but obviously that's not always possible so this is a second best so here's my secret card uh, 3000 yen a little tells you your trip is in in progress where you got on pretty cool in my opinion never seen this before Oh, I just about made it to my hotel in Tokyo. It's just down there, another three, four hundred meters. It was a pretty simple train ride. It cost uh, 2,300 ish yen, which is about 13, 14 pounds, which I think is a good deal because it took an hour or so. I think it's about 60 kilometers or something like that. It's quite far. Um, and the quality of the transport was great. Uh, free Wi Fi and everything. It's about to cross the Jaguar. That's it by somebody's keeping that thing going yeah anyway so thank you ever so much for watching if you liked the video don't forget to hit like and subscribe it will really help me out and I'll catch up with you guys next time